Welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast, made for women who want their healthiest years to be ahead of them, not behind them. Join your host, Courtney Townley, right now as she breaks down the fairy tale health story you have been chasing all of your life into sensible action steps and lasting change. Hello and welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast. This is your host, Courtney Townley. I hope you are doing awesomely well. Thank you for taking time out of your day to be here and listening into this podcast because let's face it, the sea of podcasts is getting bigger by the day. So I appreciate your loyal listenership. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy. Now, I don't know what's going on in your world, but I have a new kid, not a human kid, an animal, an animal child. My mom always wanted me to have another child. All my friends told me that I would get the itch to have another kid. Well, my son's almost 10 and I've never had the itch. <laughs> as much as I adore him, I love being a mother. It's been the greatest gift of my life, but I was one and done. However, I have always wanted a Great Dane puppy. (laughs) I grew up with Great Danes. I love Great Danes. And long story, I won't get into it today, but we had the opportunity to adopt a Great Dane puppy a couple weeks ago. And holy cow, is it just like having a little toddler in the house? (laughs) So that's what's new in my world. (laughs) I'm staying very busy chasing around uh, this puppy. We spent 45 minutes barking in the yard this morning at our own shadow. So good times ahead. (laughs) He's amazing though, really. Now, the theme for this month on the podcast, in case you haven't been around or you just need a refresher, is finding freedom through discipline. And this is going to be the final episode in this series. So we've done four podcasts on this theme. So if you enjoy today's episode, I would really encourage you to go back and visit the other three. The other thing that I want to bring to your attention right out of the gate is that we created an awesome PDF to help guide you through the main takeaways of this theme. So if you feel like you missed a couple episodes or you got a lot of value out of this month's content, but you really would like some written content to help remind you of the key takeaways, I would encourage you to head on over to graceandgrit.com forward slash discipline roadmap. Once again, that's graceandgrit.com forward slash discipline roadmap. I've got a lot of great feedback about this document. I think it's been really helpful to people and we are planning on providing a document very similar for every future theme that we talk about. So exciting things ahead. Just to remind you of what we discovered or talked about last week, we talked about four disciplined actions that will supercharge the change process. And those four things, just to refresh, were number one, self-awareness, absolutely the most important piece. From there, we moved on to the practice of organizing yourself, organizing your time, organizing your day, really getting yourself in order to live a day that you feel really proud of. We talked about the practice of follow-through, because let's face it, a lot of people struggle with the follow-through part. In fact, it's probably one of the greatest barriers to entry um, in terms of the life you truly want to live. So I talked about that. And then we ended by just briefly touching on the power of realigning yourself when you find yourself misaligned. And that's really the topic I want to do a much deeper dive into today, because the reality is life is going to throw you a lot of curveballs. And what I mean by a curveball is anything that throws you out of alignment with the way that you want to be living your life. And there's going to be a lot of opportunity in your lifetime to get misaligned. And the quicker we can identify that we're misaligned, the quicker we can realign ourselves. I know women who spend years, even decades, in a space of being misaligned because they don't know how to realign themselves. And so today I hope to give you some tools and strategies for making the realignment process much more swift and graceful. 
Now, there's three kinds of curveballs that life's going to throw you, in my opinion. I I briefly touched on these last week, but I want to quickly review them. There is the unforeseen, the foreseen, and then the self-induced. So unforeseen curveballs, the things that misalign you, are challenges that you never could see coming. And therefore, there's absolutely no way you could have prepared for them. So I'm directly speaking to illnesses, injuries, deaths that you have with family and friends, any kind of crisis that is just unpredictable, right? Crisis is always unpredictable. The next kind of curveball that you may experience and you will experience in your lifetime are the foreseen challenges. So foreseen challenges are the things that you actually can predict. You know that they're coming, but they often throw you further off kilter than you expected. So this would include things like travel, going on a vacation, going on a work trip, having company in your home, having to have a surgery, right? We usually have to schedule surgeries, not all surgeries, but I'm talking about like the shoulder, the rotator cuff surgery, the knee replacement, things that you have to plan for in advance. Also foreseeing challenges would include major life transitions, like a move across country, taking on a new job, engaging in a new relationship, all right? These are things that you can, you know, you kind of know that they're coming, you know you're going through them, but you're a little bit unprepared for how to stay aligned during them. And then finally, the third kind of challenge or curveball that you're going to face in life is the self-induced. And this is my favorite category (laughs) because, man, do we needlessly suffer by putting on ourselves a lot of self-induced challenges. What do I mean by that? I mean, we do the work consistently enough that we start getting some results. And then we start testing the waters with how much we can get away with, right? So maybe you've been losing weight, right? And you've been doing really well. You've you've been really aligned with the actions you know you need to take to get to whatever that goal is. And you start really experiencing some success. And so you start testing the waters a little bit, right? Because when you test the waters a little bit, nothing major happens. But you continue to test the waters day after day. And what happens Well, of course, you gain all the weight back. So that, to me, is a very self-induced type of curveball. Resistance is also a type of curveball because I think that we engage with resistance far more than we need to. We make it mean things that make us unnecessarily suffer. And so to me, resistance is a self-induced curveball. Now, here's the thing I really want you to hear. Nothing I tell you today will help you to realign if you are not aware that you need realigning or if you don't take the time to realign yourself. And I just want to emphasize this because this goes back to what I talked a lot about in last week's episode, which was that first point of needing to be very self-aware How do you know you're out of alignment? Now, if you've listened to this podcast for any length of time, you know that I'm a big fan of finding your compelling reasons for engaging in change in the first place. I always encourage my clients to find their compelling reasons by getting very clear on what improving their health will give them that they don't currently have. And to be totally honest with you, that's usually a feeling. They're trying to, they want to feel something that currently they're not feeling. So I am a big fan of getting clear on what living in alignment might look and feel like for you. I think that's very important from the outset of any kind of change process. However, I also think it's incredibly important to your long-term success for you to become hyper-aware of what misalignment might look and feel like for you. 
If you don't recognize when you're misaligned, which I would argue most people do not, you can slide down a very slippery slope of self-sabotaging behaviors very quickly, which unravels an awful lot of good work in a relatively short period of time. The sooner you acknowledge that you are misaligned, the sooner you can pivot yourself back into alignment. So right now, in this very moment, I want you to take just a couple seconds to consider ways in which you recognize you are out of alignment when it comes to your health. In other words, how do you know when you're out of alignment? How do you know you're misaligned? Do you get reactive? Do you have a hard time focusing? Do you get really tired? Do you have joint pain, headaches? Does your skin break out? Do you start having really nasty PMS? That's one for me, for sure. My PMS is a great barometer of my alignment. So what does misalignment feel like? What does it act like? What does it look like? Of course, the second part of this, once you start recognizing what misalignment looks like for you, you have to assume full responsibility from this day forward that you are the only person who is capable of bringing yourself back into alignment. Yes, you can ask for help, but you are solely responsible for doing the work that will realign you. And the sooner you can accept that truth, the quicker you can get to work. And I know for a lot of people, this is a very hard pill to swallow. It is a choice to stay misaligned. I see people choosing to stay misaligned by marinating in excuses, marinating in blaming other people, refusing to set boundaries, being unwilling to ask for help, clinging and protecting beliefs that no longer serve them. You could literally spend your entire life in a misaligned state. And the sad truth is that many people will make that choice. And well, that really sucks. So I have two tips for you on this misalignment component. The first thing is seriously consider what misalignment looks and feels like for you. And and that really just involves naming and noticing what you're feeling with curiosity. This is self-awareness 101, which again, I've talked a lot about over many episodes in this podcast. You must stay in constant dialogue with your body and how it's responding to the choices that you are making daily, hourly, right? We have to check in with our body and and just notice what it's feeling with curiosity, with fascination, not with judgment. I have a lot of tools for how I teach this to my clients, but honestly, just starting by taking a couple seconds out of your day, multiple times a day to just check in and label, name what you are feeling. And is it something you want to be feeling? And if not, how can you take responsibility for changing that? The second thing I would say in regards to this is be fiercely proactive. Meaning, you need to take radical responsibility for your choices, for your alignment or misalignment. I know it's cliche, but it needs to be said. You can't control what life throws at you. Those curveballs are coming. You can't control that. But you always have a choice in how you respond to the curveball. 
And that's what I mean by radical responsibility, by being fiercely proactive. Okay, the next thing that I teach my clients in terms of how to get them to quickly realign themselves is I encourage them to do a five-point check. So you can use life's curveballs as rationale for not showing up for yourself, which is what most people do, right? I'm too busy. I'm too stressed. I'm in the middle of a move. This new, I have this new project at work. I started this new relationship. Those things happen, and they definitely demand a different level of self-care, but we often use them as rationale for not taking care of ourselves at all. But you could choose to use the fact that life is tripping you up as all the more reason to take good care of yourself. Because when you are chemically stable, you are in such a better position to make great choices in regards to the stressors that you are facing in your life. Stress demands that you take better care of yourself But most women I know are in a habit of using stress as a reason to not take care of themselves, which ultimately only produces more stress. You're stressed out, so you don't make time to move your body. You cut your sleep short. You don't eat, you know, a nutritious diet. So now not only are you mentally stressed, but now you're physically stressed. So this is where I always bring people back to the basic tenets of healthy living. Many of you have done my 5 to Thrive Challenge, which we'll be doing again here in a couple months. It's a free event that I run for the public to basically remind them of the basic tenets of healthy living. But the basic tenets of healthy living is the easiest place to course correct when you're feeling off kilter. It really is. So I encourage people to do this five-point inspection that allows them to get clear if they are causing more stress or if they're actually helping to unpack their stress. So here are the five points that I encourage clients to go through anytime they're feeling misaligned. Number one, what what has the state of my recovery been? Have I been sleeping enough? Have I had enough time off work? Am I honoring that my body needs rest and recovery? This is something in our, in our culture of hustle, most people are sacrificing every day. They don't have time to recover. And then they wonder why their body is breaking down or why they don't have the mental capacity to deal with the problems at hand. Recovery cannot be optional. It is your saving grace when it comes to stress. Your body does so many incredible things when you're in a state of rest and recovery. Our immune system is fortified. Our hormones reset. Our brain cashes out. Our cells are rebuilding tissues. So many incredible things happen when we are resting and recovering. But if you're cutting that time short, you are doing yourself no favors on the front of stress. The other thing I tell clients to ask themselves is, am I hydrated? Drinking water is so simple. It's free. And it's amazing how much better hydration can make you feel. You think more clearly. Your joints feel better. You have more energy. You digest your food better. Your liver is more able to detoxify, which is its primary job. Every cellular process in the human body demands water. And it's such a simple thing that we so easily dismiss. And I have seen hydration move mountains when it comes to physical stress. So am I hydrated is a great question to be asking. Checking in with the tape that's playing in your head, the, your mindset. What, is, what am I thinking right now? What is the state of my mindset? Do I need to take out some time and do some work here? Right? If I'm thinking thoughts that are not useful to me, that are making life harder, why am I choosing to keep them? How you think is a choice. What's the state of my nutrition right now? Now, this is always an interesting topic because, yes, we can talk about superfoods and we can talk about nutritional density and all of those things. But one of the things I see women do on default is when a woman is really stressed, she tends to not eat 
for long periods of time, which of course robs her of energy and her ability to move productively through her life. And many women will then binge eat later in the day around late afternoon or dinner time. So normal, so typical. So do I need to feed myself a little more consistently through the day? Does my body need a little bit more fuel? It's rarely about eating less food when you're really stressed out. I'm not saying that there's there's no such thing as stress eating. There is. But with a lot of clients that I've worked with over the years, stress eating happens on the tail of a long window of time when they haven't eaten. So their blood sugar is low, they're ravenously hungry, on top of it, they're stressed out, and so yes, then they stress eat. But if we eat nutritious food throughout the day, we don't get ourselves into a position where we feel so out of control around food. So something to consider. And then finally, the fifth point is movement, right? When was the last time I moved my body? Can I just get up from my desk right now and stretch and maybe go for a walk and come back to this problem I'm facing at work with a different perspective? I love that quote, move your body, move your life, because I have found that to be true throughout my life. Whenever I am facing a problem that I can't seem to resolve, if I just step away from it, get physical with my body, it's amazing how quickly the answers come. So again, the five points that I encourage clients to do for a five-point check when they're feeling misaligned is check in with your recovery, check in with your water, check in with your mindset, your nutritional density, and kind of the amount of food you're eating through the day, and check in with your movement. These are not the only things that could influence your stress levels, but I definitely consider them the front line of defense against misalignment. And I will tell you that it is very rare in my life when I'm feeling misaligned and the answer is not in one of those five. Like 99.9% of the time, the problem I am facing with being misaligned can be answered by addressing one of those five points. They are what I call anchors, anchors to our health. So when in doubt, because a lot of people will say, well, gosh, Courtney, all these things seem out of, line, out of alignment for me. Where do I start? When in doubt, always start with recovery. I honestly believe that the lack of recovery for most people is the reason we get so easily out of alignment in other areas. So if you're only getting four to five hours of sleep a night, to me, it's no mystery why you aren't moving your body, why your mindset is in the gutter, and why you're eating garbage. There is nothing a good night's sleep can't help soften, and it is fertilizer for motivation and productivity. Again, I have never felt misaligned and not been able to identify gaps in one of those five areas. So food for thought. Another thing I want to bring up today in terms of realigning yourself quickly is recommitting. Success requires recommitting to the person that you want to become. Not once a year, not on January 1st. You need to recommit weekly, daily. Hell, some days I need to recommit hourly. Brooke Castillo, who I adore, I'm, I'm, a lot of you know that I'm in her um, certification program right now. But she she brings this point up by saying that every day, you need to sell yourself on yourself. You need to convince yourself why you're worth showing up for, why you're willing to do the work. Sell yourself on yourself every single day. Because here's the thing, you will compromise. You will negotiate you will grant yourself one too many permissions. You will, at some point, find yourself sliding down that very slippery slope back to old behaviors that aren't serving you. In other words, your progress will not be linear. 
which is awesome. And I know you're saying, Courtney, that is so not awesome. (laughs) But it is awesome because when progress isn't linear, you, my friend, get to learn and grow. I honestly worry the most about my clients who do everything perfectly. Because I know that at some point they are going to start making some choices that are take them out of alignment. And if that isn't when I'm around, I really worry about how they're going to handle that. The change process is messy. Stop trying to convince yourself that it isn't supposed to be messy. I would be concerned if it isn't messy. My husband, when we go... um, when I went skiing with him really early on in our relationship. And, you know, I would kind of brag at the end of the day, I didn't fall once. And he would say to me, yeah, babe, that's because you're not skiing hard enough. And, you know, honestly, like I took that to heart and I was like, you know, he's kind of right. I was very safe. And please don't hear me saying that I think you need to be like, you know, risking your life <laughs> to, to get in the ring with uh, growth. But absolutely, if I want to become a better skier, I need to be willing to fall and put myself in situations where I'm not ending the day saying, oh, I didn't screw up once. You will mess up. And when you do, the quickest way to realign is to recommit. And I always love to think, like, nobody gets divorced because they have one argument with their spouse, right? Or even a few. You don't stop parenting because you're an imperfect parent. Because come on, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. Like, I I don't know about you, but my attitude as a parent is I just hope I don't screw him up too much. (laughs) You don't end your relationship with money because you made one costly mistake. So why would you stop taking care of yourself when life throws you a curveball or you make a few misaligned choices? When you find yourself disoriented because life tossed you a curveball or you created your own curveball or you notice that your old ways are starting to seep back in, you simply recommit. You take time out of your day to once again sell yourself on yourself. Revisit your reasons for starting in the first place, which really has everything to do with cleaning up your mindset, how you're thinking. You could think in a way that keeps you misaligned for years, or you could choose to change your thinking and realign yourself very quickly. I used to spend so much time caught up in my excuses, caught up in my my rationalizations for why I couldn't do something. And once I finally started taking responsibility for how I was thinking, it's amazing today how quickly I can realign myself because I don't make it mean anything. When I grant myself a permission too many, okay, all right, Courtney, I see what you did. You're taking responsibility for how you feel. It's no mystery why you feel like hell this morning. So what are you going to do about it? What's the plan today to get yourself back on track? Rather than, oh, it's Saturday morning. I feel like hell. You know, I'm just going to keep going with this and, and I'll recommit on Monday morning. That's not necessary. Here's the final thing I want to say today about realigning yourself quickly and gracefully. You need to learn to honor the ebb and flow of discipline. And this is a refreshing truth that I have mentioned many times on this podcast. I'm going to say it again. Self-care does not always look the same. Imagine, I've used this analogy before, but it's such a good one, I'm going to use it again. Imagine if we had an athlete training at the Olympic level 365 days a year. Everybody would think that's insane, borderline abusive, because we know that no human can maintain that level of discipline all year round. 
And yet, that's kind of what we expect of ourselves, which is no wonder why we have so much resistance to discipline. Because we think it has to look like an elite level athlete 365 days a year. I have to meal prep every Sunday for four hours every week this entire year. I have to make it to the gym six days a week for an hour and a half every single day, you know, or every single week for the rest of this year, right? We put ourselves into such extreme expectations and wonder why we fight back like toddlers. Taking care of your health does not always mean that you can apply the same level of discipline. In fact, if you try to, I guarantee you're going to have a lot of unnecessary resistance and you're probably not going to get very far. Sometimes taking care of your health means maintaining where you are. Sometimes it means achieving a new level of success and acclimating in that space for a while before you push harder again. Right? That's what they do when they climb Everest, right? They hike they get, gain a lot of elevation. They set up camp for a few days to acclimate to that new elevation. And then they start again and they do it again and they do it again until they finally reach their destination. I think we really undervalue the practice of acclimating, which is probably should be a whole another podcast. You need to expect that there will be times of the year where you absolutely cannot dig as deep as you would like to. A few of those times might be the holidays, going into an impending surgery, experiencing an illness, having to cope with a death in the family, having to cope with any kind of big stressor. We create so much unnecessary stress for ourselves by trying to make self-care always look the same. We exercise when we should be resting. We eat less when our body is really demanding more. We hyper-focus on diet and exercise when really our mindset is our greatest barrier. Health is like a dial. I love this analogy. There are times of the year where you can crank the dial all the way up and go full steam ahead because you're not really dealing with a lot of other stressors in your life. But there are also times of the year where it is respectful to yourself to allow yourself to turn the dial down, to back off, and to just maintain Jade Tita, who I had on the podcast, I don't, gosh, I don't remember, I think it was back in October of last year, we were talking all about female hormones, but he talks a lot about the concept of structured flexibility, which I have adopted, and I talk about it all the time on this podcast with my clients, but structured flexibility is basically the idea that there are aspects to your life that you have structure around, or let's just say your health. For me, the structure goes back to those five points that I mentioned earlier, right? My structure is, am I getting, am I recovered? Am I hydrated? Am I eating a decent diet? Am I taking time to move my body? And am I taking responsibility for how I'm thinking? The flexibility comes in by recognizing that you cannot be as disciplined with all of those things all year round. Does it mean you can't engage with them at all? Of course not. It just means that you can't always engage with them to the extent that you want to be. So some really good questions to consider that I think will help you to honor the ebb and flow of discipline are are these. Number one, asking yourself often and much, what does self-care look like in this situation? When you're on vacation, what does self-care look like? When you're sick, what does self-care look like? When you're moving across country, what does self-care look like now? I recognize it needs to look different, but how can I still show up for myself on some level? Something that helps me with that question is always considering what are my non-negotiables? 
What are the things that no matter what life throws me, I am not willing to negotiate? I will tell you, hands down, my non-negotiable is going to bed at a reasonable hour and getting enough sleep. Does it mean I never have a bad night's sleep? Or I never stay up a little bit later than I would like to? Of course not. But that is very much the exception and not the rule. I fiercely protect my sleep because to me, it is the linchpin to my success in every other area of my health. What are your non-negotiables? Where do you need to be a little bit flexible when life is throwing you a curveball? Do you need to change the way you're working out? Do you need to change the way that you're preparing and consuming food? Do you need to hire some help? Do you need to set some boundaries? Is this a time to turn up the dial on my discipline or to turn it down? This to me is that conversation of do I need more grace or do I need more grit? Turning the dial up to me represents grit. Turning the dial down to me represents grace. If your discipline is creating more stress during an already stressful time, I would argue that you need to turn the dial down. That would be the healthiest choice that you could make. Does it mean you're going to have to keep it on low volume forever? Of course not. The tide will turn. This stressful period will pass. You will learn, even if the stressful period lasts for a long time, you will learn how to better manage it as time goes on. But learning how to honor the ebb and flow of discipline is such a powerful skill set. So let's just review really quickly. In order to realign yourself quickly, you need to acknowledge and assume responsibility for being misaligned. You need to recognize what that looks like and what it feels like without judging and without marinating in those things defining you. They don't. It's just something you're experiencing do a five-point check. Ask yourself, am I reco- what's the state of my recovery? Am I hydrated? What am I thinking? Right? What's the state of my nutrition right now? When was the last time I took time out to move my body? Or am I moving too much? Am I exercising too aggressively when really my body is asking me to pull back? Recommit daily, sometimes hourly, to the person that you want to become. Choose yourself every day. Reinstill that commitment to the change process every single day. And finally, honor the ebb and flow of discipline. It doesn't always look the same. You cannot always have the same level of discipline. And it's borderline abuse for you to expect yourself to. All right, one more time, I'm going to remind you of the awesome opt-in that we created for you that kind of gives you just a little summary of all of these points. You can register for that PDF document at graceandgrit.com forward slash discipline roadmap. And just to let you know, again, this is the final episode in this series of Finding Freedom Through Discipline. And next month, we're going to be talking all things mental health, specifically modern day mental health, which I'm really excited about. This has been a topic I've wanted to cover for a really long time, and it just seems like now's the time. So I hope you will join me for that. Of course, when I say mental health, you know, I believe that mental health is the most important thing when it comes to our state of health, because without it, we're not going to be motivated or able to show up on any other level for our health. So mental health is is really just so relevant and so powerful to our health story. So I hope you'll join me for that. I love hearing from you, Courtney at graceandgrit.com. I hope you got value out of today's episode and I look forward to having you join me again next week. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Grace and Grit podcast. It is time to mend the fabric of the female health story, and it starts with you taking radical responsibility for your own self-care. You are worth the effort, and with a little grace and grit, anything is possible.